Uh, welcome to the very first chapter of your physics journey. This is the Science of Physics. This is by Ergopedia. Uh, remember, you can always read the textbook or listen to the textbook. Uh, this is just one of the many ways through this little PowerPoint that you can also learn the information. I highly suggest also reading the chapters. In this chapter, it's going to kind of be an overview of what you're going to see throughout the uh, whole semester. Here, we're going to go to kind of chapter by chapter and explain things, and it's going to explain kind of what physics is. So make sure that you uh, write down everything and take good notes because you're going to be having these in class also. You're going to be bringing the notes to class. Uh, these PowerPoints are always going to start out with little assessment questions, and we'll come back to these questions at the very end. So make sure you read these, which statement correctly describes the science of physics. Physics is the study of living things the study of chemical bonds and processes, the study of medicines, the study of matter and energy. So we'll come back to this at the very end, and we'll cover this during this chapter. All right, you're going to have a lot of vocabulary throughout this whole year, and the PowerPoints will always start with the vocabulary. They're also located in your book. If you open your book and you mouse over any of the words that are blue, it will actually give you the definitions. So I highly suggest that you go through the book the online book and look at it that way and you can get your definitions that way. Uh, there's going to be fill in the blank questions also along the way. In order for a car to stop, its brake must apply A and blank to the wheels. Blank is needed to do work such as lifting a heavy mass. So we'll come back to this at the end. Here's even more physics terms. You're going to need to know what each one of these is. Are. So make sure that you take notes and figure these out along the way. Bring them to class. Alright, now starting. What is physics? Physics is a science that explains how the physical universe works. Every other science out there uses physics. We have all these laws and theories in physics, and everything out there has to follow the laws of physics that we have. And this book and this class is going to help explain that. An example of this would be Newton's laws of motion to be used to describe the motion of a skydiver. He's going to have a velocity going down, and velocity is one of the terms we use a lot here in physics. Why is physics important? Discoveries in physics have led to the development of nearly all human technologies. Here you see a couple of the formulas. We'll be using these this year. I won't explain what they are just yet. But it's important to study physics because it helps you understand the world around you. Whether it be how things move, whether it be how you see and see color, it's how you see, hear sound, it's how you talk, it's how we have gravity and how the gravitational fields work. There's so many different things that all the other sciences and physics happens all around you. That's why it's important to study. More examples would include electricity, cell phones, microwaves, and many other things you use every day. So just to reiterate, it's important that you understand the world around you. That's why you understand physics, why you take the cl physics classes. What is physics about? Physics is the most basic of the sciences. As you see here, it's the least complex. It has fundamental rules for their interaction of matter, energy, and forces. So basically, physics you could put on your base level because what it does is it affects every other science out there. So it's going to be our foundation for understanding all the other sciences. Physics is the most basic of the sciences, described by the basic forces, the nature of atoms and matter, and the process by which matter and energy interact. So we're going to be talking a lot about energy this year and how energy works and how energy flows through just about everything that's around. So it's the least complex. How does physics relate to chemistry? Chemistry is one higher level in complexity than physics. So we're going to an intermediate complexity level. Particles and forces combine in the diversity of the compounds and reacts. That is the material world. So you, chemistry uses physics to come together to create other, at, the atoms come together to create molecules and compounds and things like that. Chemistry describes how the basic particles and forces combine to create trillions of different molecules. Your body is made up of trillions of molecules. The car you drive is made up of trillions of different molecules and things like that. So physics is the foundation. Chemistry takes that one step further and combines all these elements together. How does physical, uh, physics relate to biology? Biology is the highest level in complexity. 
Uh, it's the most complex millions of compounds in innumerable reactions in complex living systems. Living organisms include millions of different molecules interacting with each other in very complicated systems. Where we talked about physics being the bottom, and chemistry put all these chemicals, uh, all these bonding agents together, well now, biology, you're putting all these agents together and now you're having them interact with one another and uh, try and complete a homeostasis uh, relationship with the body or with whatever living organism you're talking about. Alright, where do we start? We start with mechanics, the study of motion. Uh, the first, I'm going to say almost nine weeks of this class, we're going to be studying motion. And here it's telling you unit two is forces in motion, three is motion, two and three dimensions, four is energy and momentum. All of this has to deal with, with motion and it's going to carry us through about the first nine weeks of this class. And when I say motion, I'm talking about mechanics. Mechanics and motion are the, basically the same thing. Egyptians used a mastery of forces to raise the pyramids. But the connection between force and motion was not understood until 3,000 years later. These pyramids were built using force and motion before we, they even knew what force and motion was. So they had an understanding of how it worked, they just didn't have a name for it. When Isaac Newton developed mechanics, the physics of force and motion, it was, like, it's, like it said, 3,000 years after this. And we're going to talk about Isaac Newton a lot in this uh, course because he made a lot of discoveries that we're still using and are very valuable today. Uh, physics is based on measurements. When you do labs, when you take data, it's always based on measurements. Chapter 2 introduces the basic principles of measurement. Uh, measurement is the basis for mechanics and all other physics branches. This is From here on in, we're going to talk a lot about just a little brief synopsis of each chapter. Chapter 3 introduces the concept of position and velocity. Position indicates where you are. Velocity indicates your speed and direction. There'll be a whole lot that we do with position and velocity. We have formulas that deal with this, and we're going to have a lot of scenarios that we talk about and how physics works with these. All right, acceleration. Chapter 4 expands the study of motion to including objects that are accelerating. Acceleration is any change in an object's velocity. And I'm going to go into more depth when we get to this chapter of actually what acceleration is, because it's one of the most important parts of motion is acceleration. All right, chapter five introduces Newton's laws of motion and the concept of force. Force helps us predict what motions will occur. And we're gonna talk a lot about forces, which direction forces go, what are net forces, what are normal forces, uh, what's a, a frictional force, what's the force of gravity, what's your weight. Different things like that are all gonna come into play when we talk about forces. Uh, motion in two and three dimensions. Chapters three through five describe motion along a line. Chapter six describes motion in two dimensions. These are going to be more complex when we get to two-dimensional, two, uh, two-dimensional, but they're not too hard. Uh, I'm not striving to make this class too hard. We're going to go through the basics of this and make sure that we understand how this works. So motion in one dimension and two dimensions is very, very important. Chapter seven introduces circular motion. This is actually kind of fun to work with and see how things spin. Circular motion describes the orbits of satellites and the motion of roller coasters. And we'll probably do a roller coaster lab and we'll see some different things and spin some stuff around to figure out how circular motion works. But it all still maintains this whole motion and mechanics part. All right, in chapter seven, you'll learn how and why planets orbit and astron astronomers apply the physics of circular motion to search for extrasolar planets. So we're still discovering planets and moons of planets and different things. And when we get to chapter 7, we'll talk about how those discoveries are actually made. Static equilibrium and torque. Chapter 8 extends the concept of equilibrium to include the idea of torque. Torque is a twisting action that may be created by forces. So when we get there, we haven't talked a whole depth about forces yet, but torque is going to come into it in a lot of play when we talk about a force going in a circle. And so that will come into play in chapter 8, which is still part of the whole mechanics thing. We've gone through chapters 1 through 8 still, and we're still talking about the same physics concept. Now we finally made it into energy. Energy is transformation. Even the best trained athlete cannot lift an elephant. But a crane with a powerful diesel engine can lift it easily. 
What explains the difference between these two? Chapter 9 and 10 introduce the physics of energy. Energy, to me, is the most important part of physics. It's still part of the whole mechanics and motion area of physics, but it is so broad dealing with the, all the different types of energy that are out there and why a guy can't lift an elephant, but a crane can lift an elephant. We're going to talk about how that energy is transformed from one form to another. Work and energy. Chapter 9 describes the relationship between work and energy. Energy is needed to do work. It takes energy to lift an elephant, more energy than a human has available. So we're going to talk about how work and energy work together to solve problems or the relationship between work and energy and how they work together to solve problems. Energy is conserved in chapter 10, which may be the key chapter to all of the first half of this book, is conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is everywhere. It is a law and everything has to apply to it. Whatever energy you start with has to equal the energy you end with. So in chapter 10, you will learn that the total amount of energy in the universe never changes. Whatever was here in the beginning is still here now and forever will be. Energy can never be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. If there's one thing that you learn from this entire year of taking this class with me, is this right here. Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. That's the key concept of physics, and that's what we're going to follow through this entire class. All right, back to our assessment questions that we started out with. So we're almost done with this first part. Which statement correctly describes the science of physics? Is it physics is the study of living things? Physics is the study of chemical bonds and processes? Physics is the study of medicines? Or physics is the study of matter and energy? Come up with your answer. Come up with your answer. We're moving on. And the answer is physics is the study of matter and energy. All right, another assessment question. Fill in the blanks. You've got several words to choose from up there. In order for a car to stop, its brakes must apply A slash and blank to the wheels. Blank is needed to do work, such as lifting a heavy mass. So think about what we talked about in this section. Pick some words to fill in the blank, and let's see what the answer is. You got your answers? So our answers are, that's a little off base. I don't know why that is. Uh, force is needed to apply a force to stop and to use your brakes, and energy is needed to do work. So that's the end of this first chapter. Uh, hopefully you took notes along the way because you're going to need to show these in class, and go on to the next video.